Hey guys, today I am coming to you with something a little different. This will be a uh, review of a show, but it's a new show um, called Little Fires Everywhere. It's a Hulu original series. This is my first time watching like anything that's an original series that's other than Netflix um, when it comes to like streaming services. But I saw Carrie, the lovely Carrie Washington. She stars in this as well as the, um, America's Sweetheart, uh, Reese, Wither the Reese Witherspoon. They both star in this. The um, show is based on a book. I have not read the book. Um, tempted to, but just going with the show right now. And she was, you know, plugging in on her IG. And I was like, hmm, let me get to that. But at the time, when it first came out, I did not have the time. But now I have nothing but time. So what I wanted to do is, um, I think the show is only like four episodes in. Um, I don't know how Hulu, Hulu, Hulu does their streaming, um, really, because I'm just like getting into it. But there are four episodes in. And right now, I am just going to give you my first impression of watching it and this is just my first impression slash recap of episode one and I believe it's called The Spark. So without further ado, um, actually don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe to my channel. Um, this, up, this season I believe is only eight episodes so I'm going to try to keep up with it um, and give my reviews I'm gonna have to catch up because I think it's like I said four episodes in so I'm gonna give what I got now and then be on the lookout for as I watch and process the next episodes so okay the episode opens with there's like this big fire this big huge house that's on fire and um we see a woman standing out and I'm like oh that must be Reese Witherspoon because I can tell her hair from that little bob cut or whatever <laughs> that she usually has and all the time, uh, blonde hair or whatever. And she's just standing in front of the fire, just looking like a sad puppy. And then um, it goes off to the who, um, these kids, and then it turns out they're her kids. They're like, oh, um, what do you think she's going to say? She's probably going to blame Izzy. And I'm like, who is Izzy? Um, and then I see Pacey. Don't remember his real name in real life, but y'all know what I mean if, well, you know what I mean. If Dawson's Creek, Pacey, I'm old. No, <laughs> I'm not that old. But every time I see him, I say Pacey. Just like when I see Dawson, which is what his name, James Vanderbeek or whatever, I see say Dawson. So he plays um, her husband in the show. And um, the policeman or whatever, he's uh, asking Reese and uh, Pacey uh, questions, asking about where's Izzy, um... We just want to ask her a few questions. He was like, Izzy, she's not even here. She had nothing to do with this. So I'm like, who is Izzy? I guess Izzy is their child. And she was their, she is their child. And they were saying that the fire um, that was started, um, it was the arson or whatever, definitely arson because when the people came in to look at it and put the fire out, there were little fires everywhere. So, <laughs> hence the title. And... Um, I guess it just all revolves around this and the whole thing that comes to be and how her house gets burned down and whatever. So then it just jumps over to the opening credits and all that. And then it jumps to, I didn't know that this was going to be a time piece. It, it goes back. It takes us back to the 90s, y'all. I believe it says 1994. I think it said it was 1994, 1997. It's the 90s, y'all. <laughs> but I think it's like 94, 97. And we see like, um, what is it? They're in Ohio. Um, it's pretty much white suburbia or suburbia. And um, it's Ohio. And I'm like, oh, snap, we're in the 90s. Then I had to look and I paused it. I just had to like refresh my mind on like what things were going on at the height of that particular part in the 90s. And I wanted to really look and see, was it before or after Rodney King? This was after Rodney King, I'm sure, because um, that was in 92 when I looked it up. I just wanted to know, because I know Kerry Washington is in this, and I want to see, like, the racial climate 
Y'all, I just, like, this is how I research my shows when I'm watching it, so I did that. <laughs> so from there, we, it just jumps back to four months before this fire starts. So from there, let me see. Um, we see Reese Witherspoon's character. She's waking up. Her daily routine is she gets up. She measures herself. Um, not measures. She weighs herself daily because she has a little journal of her weight and all this. She weighed like 117. I'm like, girl, okay. And um, she does all like walks around the house with her like workout gear. And then she gets, she's getting her like four or whatever kid plus kids ready for school. They're all older. They all seem to be um, high school age. And, um, or, yeah, they all seem to be high school age. Or I think Izzy is a little younger. She might just be about to go to high school or something. But they're all older kids. They're not, she ain't got no babies. And she getting them all up and ready for school. She's, you know, kissing her husband. You know, just like the pretty little white picket fence family. So it seems as we are watching there. But it just seems like mom is one of those moms who kind of just like has to stick to a certain thing and it has to be like this and and we see more of that as this the show unfolds for this episode we'll see the development of Reese's character as well as others um so from there um I guess the Izzy girl we see her and she's the only one who isn't downstairs already um and and ready and up for the day and all that. So we can already tell that she's kind of like the black sheep of the family. She's not up with all the other, her siblings and get ready to go and all that. And then she come down and she making comments about uh, breakfast. She wants Pop-Tarts. And the mom like, we haven't bacon and eggs. And then she's talking about some pigs or, you know, uh, baby pigs or whatnot. Have, or not pigs have the intelligence of a three-year-old. And like, she was just, you know, just rebelling just a rebellious like teenager because I believe she's like 14 um I think they mentioned later so from there um we see her she sends her kids off to school and then we see her driving and she's on her little car phone so you know she, they got money y'all that the house is huge beautiful big mansion house she's driving off in her car she got a car phone so back in the 90s you got a car phone you got some money okay um so she got a little car phone um or cell phone i don't know it's big y'all you know them big ass phones so she going around in that and then she sees um across from her job she sees uh a car and she's kind of looking and she sees uh, that it has like a whole bunch of stuff in it. It looked like somebody's living in their car. So she goes into her job, you know, goes, uh, walks through. She works at a newspaper or whatnot. And I guess she's a, she's a journalist. And um, she goes in and immediately, you know, says hi to her coworkers and all that. Goes in, calls the police. I was like, hold on now. Now, if the person, and then she's like, yes, I'm like, She's one of those. So she calls the police, says there's an African woman, African American woman parked outside in her car, and it looks like she seems to be living in the car. And she's talking about some I just rather say something and and now and then I say something and something wrong. I'm like, what you think she's gonna do? Is she out there doing anything horrible? Like, I'm just like, really? Really? That's how we gonna start this off? I already don't like you, boo. I already don't like you. So anyway, from there. We go and we see um, Carrie Washington's character, and her character name is Mia. Um, uh, Reese Witherspoon's character's name is Elena. Uh, Carrie Washington is Mia, and her daughter Pearl. They're in the car, and it was just them. And then she sees the police pulling up or whatnot, and she like wakes her daughter up, like, "Hey, wake up!" And then she even tells her daughter to keep her hands, you know, visible, because y'all know, even to this day. Y'all need to keep y'all hands visible in a car, especially as black people. That is, it's, it, it was the truth then and it is the truth now, even almost even more so because of the way stuff is. Then it's a sad reality. So we see that. Like, it's little things that I was noticing throughout it. And I was like, okay, okay. So from there, we see them go off to the grocery store. And she's like looking for, well, she was looking through the newspaper and everything. Then they go through to the grocery store and they go into the grocery store, I believe, bathroom and take some whole baths, y'all. They got the wet wipes. They brushing their teeth. She fixing her hair of the daughter. She got braids, so she cool. Um, and all that. And then they are look. And then 
I was just as her character the development you can tell that she's she's a single mother and she's with her daughter and then I think they were gonna buy some type of food and then she puts one of the all the food that they have they have a, like whatever food they got water like very necessity only what they really need because you can see that money is limited they ain't even got no place to stay because they got all their stuff in their car so but mom put something away because she can see that her daughter wanted this little teen magazine i was like oh that's sweet y'all gonna get that instead of like some food i mean they did get food but i think they just did get like some nutella or something i couldn't make it out no one about to rewind it it was a cute little moment but um from there mom is looking at apartments or whatnot she's like oh this seems like it, it would be nice and um she was saying it was in this particular school district or whatever that she could go to and the daughters are excited. So they go to look at the uh, apartment and then they drive up. It's like this nice looking house. And it's like, I thought it was a, supposed to be a duplex. And, this, and you know, that's what the daughter says. And um, Carrie's uh, watching she like, it is. And then who is the leasing agent? None other than uh, Elena Reese Witherspoon. So she's showing her, she's like, oh, I thought this was just a duplex. She was like, oh, it is. But the house was built to show the appearance that it's one family living there. So it doesn't give off the appearance that it's a rental because it doesn't look right for the area. And she's like, oh, okay, yeah, you wouldn't want that. Wouldn't want any renters around here. You must be a homeowner only or at least appear to be one. So... This is, it's just giving you a, a vibe of the whole area and how it is over there. It's like, okay. So she's showing her uh, around the apartment. The daughter seems to be automatically be in love with it and so happy. Y'all, she was talking about for this two bedroom with a sunroom with, uh, what is it, lights, I think, and water included. It was $300 back in the 90s. So it's the 90s. Who I miss them 90s prices? Lord Jesus. Um, and then, um, she was asking her, you know, was she like, uh, if she was, oh, she was telling her she could knock off some of the rent if she was willing to do the line because the other person is the Asian man who lives downstairs or something. He used to do it, but he got arthritis and he can't do it no more. But, you know, they could work out a dish. She's like, fine, I don't mind mowing the line if it knocks off some of the rent, you know. That's a typical thing. Like, if it's, like, a small place like that, if you're willing to do some some type of maintenance, outside maintenance, they will knock off rent. So, that wasn't nothing big. So, that was made it even cheaper. So, it's probably, like, two fifty. Who knows uh, uh, what she ended up paying for because they didn't say what the final price was going to be. But she was like, oh, um, she's like, so how would the lease go? She asked uh, Elena. And she's like, um, well, it's one year to start, you know, and it's month to month you know, uh, whatever, but it's one year to, you have to like do a year lease. And she's like, Oh no, I can't do that. I really have to do month to month to start. And then she was like, Oh, well, I don't really like to do that. And then she was like, it's okay. I don't uh, under, I don't expect you to change any of your rules for me. That's fine. The daughter, you can tell that she's rather upset. She's like, mom, no, this place is perfect. I can finally have my own room. So you can tell this little girl, I never really had much, uh, to herself. Cause it seems like mom and her move around a lot because she said that she was an artist and then she's like oh you're an artist and, she, and then she later asked her again like oh what do you do and then she's like i told you i'm an artist she's like oh you know i don't imagine artists you know she doesn't think it like art actually being an artist pays which in a lot of cases it does not and that's probably why they're living the way they are but she's like no that's what i do and that's you know because she was like, oh, I kind of just think of artists as like, you know, being like, you know, something saying like you're a spy or something. I'm like, a spy girl. Anyway, so it just just tells you how her mindset is as this uh, suburban, um, well, she's at least a suburban working mother. She ain't like a housewife. So I give her some points for that. So she goes off and then they were like, oh, no, well, we, uh, Carrie Washington was like, no, nah, I'm not going to take it because if I can't get it for months and months. So they're walking out and Reese discovers that that's the same car that they're walking out to the same car that she just caught the police on earlier that day. So I'm, I don't know if it's her white guilt or what, but now she kind of feel bad and she goes on and she's like, you know what? Um, and then makes a deal with me and agrees to do the month to month thing. So then I'm like, okay, so she's going to be, they're going to live there. I'm like, all right. So, um, 
Then she goes home and she's, you know, talking, they have a family dinner and you could get like a vibe of all the kids and everything. The kids seem like typical little key, uh, teenagers or whatnot, you know. Um, there's a daughter. She's, uh, I think she's the oldest. I don't know if the, the daughter's the oldest or the one brother is older. The brother might be older. I'm not sure. And then there's another brother, Moody. Um, but the, the daughter... And then there's the uh, other daughter, Izzy, and she just seemed like she's just kind of like the black sheep of the family, and she really just not really fits in with the rest of everybody, and she's just kind of in her own world and all that. And they're talking about, um, you know, stuff at the dinner table, family dinner, and then it goes, um, the, the Pacey or whatever, I don't know his name, uh, Mr. Somebody, but I'm going to call him, call him Pacey from now for, for this part because I really don't remember his name. He was like, you rented the place um, to someone and you didn't even um, run their references. And then it was like, furthermore, that you rented it to a homeless person. And then she was like, no, she's a single mother. And, you know, just be in between home. She's in between homes. I mean, that's one way to say that you homeless, you in between homes. Like, I, I got a home right now, but I'm about to get one. <laughs> I don't know. But, yeah, so she was just, and then she was like, yeah, she's an African-American woman, and she's very attractive. I was like, oh, okay, what that got to do with it? And then um, the daughter, uh, Izzy, was like, oh, uh, so-and-so says that we're supposed to say black now. And it's like, well, Jesse Jackson says African-American, and he's on TV. So it's just like, okay, whatever. So it's just like family dinner, kicking shit, talking. And we get we just get to see how the characters, um, the family dynamic is or whatnot. Then it goes off to um, I guess them. What else? Uh, Pacey and uh, Reese Witherspoon or whatever. They're upstairs, you know, going about to go to bed, and they talking. And then I guess he was trying to get it on or whatnot. And she was like, "Oh, honey, you know, sex is, is for Saturday." I'm like, "Planned sex." Please shoot me if I ever get to that point where my marriage is like sex is for Saturdays and every the other day we just chilling like, oh my goodness. Then she even had the nerve to say that sex is better when it's planned. I'm like, to who? For who? I'm like, I don't know, girl. But if it worked for you, it didn't seem like it was working for her husband though. So from there, uh, what else? Um... It jumps to uh, Mia and Pearl, um, you know, mother daughter, Carrie Washington's character, and they're unpacking. And Pearl just seems so happy to have this home, and she's just reading over all the like the neighborhood welcome and the neighborhood guidelines that Reese gave them. And it just seems like it's a whole bunch of rules that they gotta abide by to live in that area. I could not do it. Not that I be doing a whole bunch of stuff in my house, and I'm cool with rules, but it's like. I don't need no whole, oh, excuse me, <sighs> I thought I had to sneeze, <laughs> y'all know when y'all think y'all need to sneeze and don't come out, that just happened, but um, it was too many rules and too many guidelines, and yeah, because even with the whole cutting of the grass, the grass can't get more than two inches, and what am I talking about, you can get fined, and all this other stuff, so it's a lot and then Reese even went on when they were talking about the schools there because she was saying how her son's a sophomore there and where pro would be going she was like yeah my mother was on the school board and she was there when um the school first got integrated I'm like when integrated oh my god like <laughs> I mean this is the 90s and your mama can't be that old talking about some of the integration of y'all school it was I mean but that's this is Ohio and you know I'm from a big city, so I can't, I don't know how things is rocking over in, like, suburbia. So, change didn't come as fast as it did in the big places where black people were more around. So, but it does seem like black people are in the area. It didn't seem like it was just, they was the only black folks there. It didn't seem like there was, a, oh, my God, he's the only black people. That wasn't the case, but it's just, it's just crazy to hear these things, like, oh, integration and all that. But anyway... So we're seeing how the dynamic between mother and daughter is and they're just like really close. You can tell they're really close. I don't think the father was ever in the um, picture. It doesn't seem like it. And then they sleep in the same bed together and then she's like, I'll get you a bed tomorrow. And she's like, I'm going to miss sleeping with you. And I'm like, girl, y'all real close. Um, 
or what not, which is sweet. It is sweet. And um, then they were talking about how they have like these little signals of how they would knock to each other about how they love each other. Like, I love you. I love you too type thing. It was a cute little thing. Um, and then uh, like when they're sleeping apart, they have these that little signal. And then um, mama was having a, a dream and it seems like she was on the subway in New York. That's what it looked like. Cause it looked real dirty. It wasn't no Chicago one because it's like the lights was flickering on and off. It looked as scary. And the ones in Chicago don't look like that. And I've been in the ones in New York and they look like that. So she's sitting on the um, train next to some people. And then Jesse Williams is staring at her from a distance like creep creep like staring and I'm like who is that I'm like is that Pearl Daddy or something and this is just a dream but it's like okay who is Jesse Williams like and having Jesse Williams play a character where he's like a creeper or weird it's just really hard to imagine him so I'm gonna need to see him in some scenes being bogus or evil or something in order for me to believe that Kerry Washington is waking up from a very scary dream from just Jesse Washington Jesse, I said Jesse Washington. Jesse Williams staring at her. Did I say Jesse Washington before? Jesse Williams, y'all, from Grey's Anatomy. But anyway, so it was just so weird. And I'm like, shoot, Jesse uh, Williams staring at me. I'm like, hi. But, <laughs> you know, but you can tell that this person gives her some type of stress. And she waking up from nightmares looking at him. So who I don't know what Jesse did to her. And maybe we'll find, I'm sure we'll find out later. So from there... We see uh, uh, Pearl is outside. I think she putting her, getting all the stuff from her bed together, like making sure all the parts are there. And her mama take, you know, Carrie taking pictures from above, you know, because it seems like she's a photographer or whatnot so far. But I mean, it looks like she might work with other things too. She's very artistic, and she's taking pictures. And then Reese Witherspoon's son. Uh, is lurking and coming up because Reese actually did say like oh her daughter's around your age why don't you go make friends say hello welcome to the neighborhood so he went ahead and did the neighborly thing and went to go say hello turns out that they hit it off right away and they started um he helped uh bring up the bed and started helping her going to pick out pain it's like this whole little montage of how their friendship developed very quickly i don't know how many days went by but they just started doing everything together um he was helping her paint her wall and everything so it's like okay that's your new little your little boo friend okay okay but that's cute and then uh we see there's another scene where uh reese uh, Witherspoon is talking to one of her friends and they in the house and her oldest daughter comes in with um, the ladies, her friends, I guess she babysits or whatever or was just watching the kid for them and then all of a sudden you hear um, what I noticed was the daughter after she took the kid Get a kid back to his mama. The oldest daughter, Reese's oldest daughter, was like, "Oh, where are my rollerblades? I want to go work off this fro yo." Never have I ever, when I was a teenager, thinking about like, "Ooh, I need to like body image stuff like that." I mean, I was very petite and everything, and I was very active in sports, but I was never like, "Ooh, I ate all this food. Let me go work it off." But I was constantly active, so I never thought that way. Anyway, it was just a natural thing that I was working stuff off. I was never working something off just because I ate it. And I used to eat like everything back then, but that's when you're a teenager, you can do that. <laughs> so it was just a little weird, but yeah. But it's just kind of see, you can kind of tell like, and then even um her and her friend were talking like how her daughter, her older daughter, is so much like her. She's like, oh, she's just. You know, she's just doing all the right things and all that, that. I'm like, well, maybe you like her so much because she's like you. And that's kind of like egotistical or narcissistic. Like, I want my kids. You got to allow your children to be who they are. They're not going to be like you. They might be some versions of you. And they might be parts of you that you don't like. And maybe that's who Izzy is. Isabella is the her daughter's name. And then as her oldest daughter goes to go find her rollerblades, she hears her daughter say, oh, my God, and scream. So Reese Brother Witherspoon or later, whatever, runs in to see what's going on. And she sees Isabella, her daughter, has burnt off, like, a big-ass chunk of her hair. And then she's like, oh, my God, are you okay? She's like, wait, did you do this on purpose? And then, like, the girl just sitting there looking, like, dead in the face and crazy. And I'm like, yeah, I could look good. Look like she needs some help or she needs to talk to somebody or something. So it was just like weird. So from there, uh, 
she took she takes her to go get her hair uh fixed or whatnot and whatnot and then she goes to run an errand and everything um breeze uh, goes to run an errand while her daughter's getting her hair cut she ends up bumping into mia and mia uh has was getting like a bike or something oh yeah because moody had told pearl that he wanted uh to take her some places but she gonna need a bike to get there and whatnot and then i just kind of didn't think no more of it but then mia went and got a bike and uh, or some pieces of a bike or something so i was like oh, okay she gonna get her a bike but that bike don't work yet so i was like maybe she's gonna fix it and then uh elena uh, walks up on me and it's like oh hey do you do sculptures and all that she's like i do multiple mediums she's like i do photography all that you know and then she's like oh that's nice and then uh elena uh no mia happens to have on a shirt that's for some type of business. She's like, oh, are you working at so-and-so, so-and-so? She's like, yeah, I'm working nice there. She's like, oh, it must be so hard on Pearl, you know, um, to not have you there at night. She's then, uh, Mia's like, she used to it. That's just her life. Like, she used to being alone. I'm like, that's not a good thing that your child is used to being in the house by themselves all the time. But anyway, girl, especially I wouldn't share that with people. But, <laughs> okay, you can really tell that Mia's an artist. It's like she tries to be a good mother but she also tries to stay true to being an artist as well because she moved a girl around all around the world it seems like and then from there we see um oh she they, they have a conference not a confrontation but she was like tries to offer her like oh um what did she first offer her she was like oh well would you like to do a portrait if you do photography you will make a whole bunch of money here in shaker she was like you can do our family portrait and she was like yeah i do photography but the problem with taking portraits is is people want you to take pictures of how they want to be seen and she takes pictures of them of as they how they really are you know so that's what she said she was like well maybe since oh then she also mentioned how she did some cleaning work at a museum and all this other stuff and she's like oh well since you did that maybe you can come and um uh i've been meaning to hire somebody to you know help in my house and everything and i'm like you did not just ask her to be your maid hey maid no for one she black and for two y'all already not vibing like that what makes you think she want to come in your house and clean it so carrie washington is always like what and then she was like yeah well you said that you did she's like i'm she's like i don't do that and she's like well you said that you worked at so-and-so so she's like yeah i did that because i want to establish a relationship with the curator there and and that got it was like a means to an end to get that it wasn't just because i wanted to be cleaning up places and she's like well this would be beneficial to you i mean i would pay you i pay you well or i pay you what was fair and like she did backtracking like you know them nervous white people where they don't want to sound racist, but they do sound racist. But, I mean, y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> so, it's just like, that's pretty much where she was at with that. And she was like, no, I'm, no, I'm not, I don't do that. And no, thank you. And then it just, they kind of just bumped heads yet again. It's like, they can't have a, a conversation where, like, it's just not on, ugh, you know, on edge. Very uncomfortable in awkward conversations every time they speak which is really good on the acting part on them. So we see, um, oh yeah, then she says that, by the way, um, the lawnmower, it, cause you know, she's supposed to be mowing the lawn at the property where they live at. And then she was like, the lawnmower's out of gas. She's like, oh, I'll send her husband, whatever his name is, over with some gas. She's like, oh no, you can just send Moody. She's like, Moody, she's like, yeah, Moody, they, he hangs out with Pearl like every day. She's like, oh, you didn't know, huh? And I'm like, oh, yeah, girl. See how much you know about your children and their lives. You don't know what your son and, and your kids be doing. They be running around, hanging out with black people. No, just like, <laughs> it's not that. But, yeah, so there, from there, we see, um, what is it? Moody ended up getting a Pearl a bike. And then he finally, uh, uh, he got Pearl the bike, and then they went off to where he wanted to go. He's like, I want to go show you some places. Like, he just want to show her the world. I can show you the world. Like, he really just trying to woo little Miss Pearl. And he brings her to this 
to their house. And um, they go to uh, his house, and Pearl is just like, oh, my goodness. I would have been in awe, too. That's a badass place. Like, that big old mansion, it's just like everything is just in place. I've been in places like that, and I'm like, oh, my goodness. Like, you don't want to touch nothing because everything just seems like it has a place, and it's just, like, pristine and all that. And that's how the house looked, and it's intimidating, especially if she used to live in, in little small apartments and in her car with her mama and stuff. But, you know, she's good. Pearl is a very educated young woman. Like, um, when she first met uh, Moody, she had a, a poem quote on her shirt. He asked her about it. He even went to the library and read the little book that she was talking about. So he really is taking a liking, a real liking to her and interest in Pearl. And it's very sweet. And, you know, Pearl seems to be fitting in. She was cool with her. The rest of um, the kids and everything and all that. So she seems to be assimilating and doing very well there. I mean, Mia don't care because she's just all into her work and all that. But and she took a moment to notice that her daughter really is, uh, you know, thriving in this. But she still, it's, it's a lot of stuff because a lot of stuff comes into play in this um, show when it comes to class, different classes as far as race and all this like all that is being touched on in this just first episode but I mean there's you cannot touch on it especially at this time I mean even in this time you have to touch on it especially when it's interracial type stuff like it is what it is so from there <clears throat> he uh so little Pearl comes to dinner and um well she asked well she uh Reese with her phone asked her could she stay for dinner and she's like I'll get you know, track down your mom and ask her if she's okay. I don't want to step on her toes. She's like, no, my mom doesn't usually really have plans for dinner anyway, so it's probably not a big deal. And she's like, well, I'll just call her and ask her, which is the right thing to do. You don't have nobody's kids over your house like that without their parents knowing. And she's like, okay. And she calls um, Mia, and she asks Mia. She's like, yeah, it's fine. She's like, just let me, just tell her to call me when she's ready, and I'll come pick her up. She's like, all right. And then I think they try to, <clears throat> Reese tries to make some small talk and, you know, she was just cut it off and hung up on her. So from there, they were sitting there and watching none other than Ricky Lake. I was like, oh, y'all giving me all the 90s teas up in this show. I was here for it. I love it. It reminds me of my childhood. So they sitting there watching Ricky Lake and all that, having a good old time. So then once it comes to the uh, later on in the night, um, Reese <clears throat> goes ahead and takes Pearl home. I was like, now why she do that? She had gone ahead and said that she was going to, um, she told her to tell her daughter to call her when she was going to drive her home. So she, but she went and took it upon herself to drive Pearl home. I don't know. It didn't look like that there was a conversation had saying like, oh, I'm just going to drive Pearl home instead. Don't worry about it. But she took it upon herself to do it anyway. So in the little car ride between, uh, Reese Witherspoon and, um, Pearl, it turns out that they, you know, get along quite well. You know, they're talking and, um, you know, she's like, oh, you're a journalist. I think that's so great. I wish I could do something like that. She's like, I don't really do something that I write poetry and all that. She's like, oh, I'm sure your work is really good. And Pearl was like, I love how you have your books um, organized by color. And she's like, oh, thank you for noticing. So it just seemed like they had a good rapport and everything. It wasn't nothing awkward. And, you know, they got along quite well. Um and then even Pearl asked to read her latest work or whatnot or whatever she was writing. And she was like, oh, yeah, sure, you know. And then Reese sent her home with some leftovers and all that. I mean, it was nice, but I could see how some parents or how some people would find that off-putting, <clears throat> excuse me, off-putting or whatnot. And it's just kind of like, oh, what, you sending me food because you think I can't feed my children or feed my child and all that. It could be like it could be seen like that, but I mean I don't know if Reese is if it's coming from that or if it's just coming from that's just how she is. It seems like it's a little bit of both. It's, it doesn't seem like it's like any ill intent behind it, but it still seems a little, mm, eh. you know, y'all know what I'm saying. So from there, um, then we see an, the uh, oh, and then from there. Um, Carrie Washington, she hears it from, she hears them talking when she's getting dropped off. And then she's looking at uh, Reese with the phone through the window. And then she leaves out the window by the time Reese looks up. And then she's like, not in the window no more. So they go, um, so it goes to the next day. And um, what's the name? Um, Moody and Pearl, they go off and ride off to the little place that he said he wants to show her. <clears throat> Excuse me, y'all. And it turns out it's like, she's like, 
they pull up to a junkyard. She's like, this is what you want to show me? And it turns out he has, like, this little hideout in a little school bus that he done tricked out and made his little, like, you know, little bat cave type thing. And he showed it to her. And then he has, like, one of the quotes from the poem from uh, that she had on her shirt from the uh, poet that she really liked. He had that on the wall. I'm like, oh, he really been, like, feeling and digging her and probably and got a little guitar and stuff. And they just having a good old time. And this actually happens to be the night of uh, Izzy because she uh, is in, like, some type of band or something or whatnot. And, um, <clears throat> oh, I forgot to mention, too. Uh, she did used to have friends and stuff or whatever, but I guess through, I don't know, in time, you know, friends go apart. And I guess she just ended up ending up on the outside of the groups and not getting along with friends and all that. And it looked like maybe it was a developmental thing because, like, her a little older friend, not her little older friend, her friend from that was her friend, uh, developed breasts and stuff. And I, that can break up friendships when you were in high school or something. And some, I mean, I I remember having the envy because I would, didn't have like boobs like that, but like some of my friends had like huge boobs, and I was just had like little B cups at that point. And I pretty much had BC cups till I was like 20 so So that's just how I was. But now I don't. But, you know, that can break up some friendships because, you know, attention and all that. And, um, yes, and she's also in, like, some type of uh, summer band camp or, or whatever. But it doesn't seem like she want to be in it, but she's in it. And it's uh, whatever. It seems to be really expensive, too, because as uh, she was talking to um, her husband about and everything. But, yeah, so... And it was all leading up to this little recital that she's supposed to be uh, performing in, and uh, this and then this is the night of the recital, and it she wanted to wear some type of because uh, it seemed like she wanted her hair to be like it seemed like she's trying to get like turn goth or something or like you know alternative, and you know Reese Witherspoon is like not having it like no you're you're my daughter you're gonna be looking a certain way and all you got to do is follow the rules and then people will like you like. I really don't like her parenting on like that. Like, let that girl be who she is. And then even um, Pacey, her husband, was telling her, like, when they've had um conversation, because Reese was like, well, maybe I should get her some help. I was like, maybe you should get that girl some help because she seems like she needs somebody to talk to. I agree with Reese on that because if she's not opening up to anybody, then maybe she does need someone to talk to because that's the worst thing, that if a child feels completely left alone and all that and they can't speak talk to anyone not even their siblings because she don't seem like she rock with her siblings and then Pacey's talking about some do you need somebody to talk to says that's a Reese and I'm like no I really think their daughter might need somebody to talk to because she seems like she really alone and she she's giving me vibes like she gonna end up being a cutter but maybe she ended up being a fire starter I don't know but she seemed like one of those kids like just goth and uh, you know down you know 90s grunge was big back then it seemed like she was really um, gravitating to that type of behavior, that type of um, feel was what I was getting from her, especially when she tried to go to her recital with, like, um, black fishnet stocking things on and some cut-off sh shorts and a, a black, all black everything, you know. And then Reese was like, no, where's that dress that I got for you? You better put that shit on and get ready so we can go to your recital. So from there... It goes to the point where they are at the recital and there was like a um, moment where she was talking to the girl who her uh, who used to be her friend and she was like, how come we're not friends anymore? And then she was like, and the girl with the little boobs and stuff, she's like, oh, you know her, we're not friends anymore, freak. I was like, you bitch. I was like, that's fucked up. And I, I know how friendships can be like that and how you can be friends with somebody for so long and then all of a sudden they go off into different groups and that can happen in college and it can happen in high school and like you know y'all like you're more drama team or you're more and then they end up being like sports it can happen but she ain't have to be funky like that but you know teenagers and shit are cruel as fuck that's why teen suicides and all that stuff like is very much real because it's a very awkward time in the kid's life and that's why I said I did agree with um getting that girl help especially when she starts doing stuff to not completely harm herself but when she start burning her hair off and stuff that's like a sign like that's a red flag right there in my mind and I study psychology it seemed like that girl just needs somebody to talk to it seemed like it's not getting any better it seemed like it was actually escalating so yeah but anyway 
they're at the recital, and then as they're at the recital, it's going back and forth between Pearl and um, Moody hanging out, you know, and having a good old time. And then all of a sudden, they see some flashing lights or something. So I don't know if somebody was patrolling through the junkyard or whatever, but it looked like somebody was in there. And then they jump out of um, the little hideout and go try to jump the fence and leave from out of the junkyard or whatnot. And then it shows, um, then it jumps back to the recital. And, um, What's the name? Pacey is not there. Her father's not there because he said he's had to meet and work late. But sometimes I be taking that as like cold word is like he cheating on her. But anyway, I don't know if he is, but this is just an observation of how he said he can't be in certain things and be around and whatnot. And she don't even have sex with him except for on Saturdays. So I don't know if that's true, but you know, that's when I was getting vibes, but whatever. So from there... She is not playing at her recital. She's sitting there with her violin in her lap. I think it's violin in her lap. And then she turns toward the audience and then it f- jumps back to what, when she, after her friend dissed her in the bathroom, she wrote on her forehead, not your puppet. So I feel like that is to society and especially a dig to her mother because her mother told her, you know, you have to follow the rules. If you follow the rules, you know, you succeed at life. And then she was like, succeed at what? Following rules? So, like, the girl, she's just really, again, like I'm saying, these are big signs. She's sitting here writing on her face, doing all this, and she's just got a lot going on. And it doesn't seem like, the girl don't seem like she has any friends. So, I could see if she had, like, a little grunge group crew, and they could grunge and be sad together, but she don't. She, at this point, don't seem like she got nobody. So, that girl needs some help. So, she's sitting there, and then Reese is just so upset and then it shows her driving home or whatnot and she's just angry as fuck at her daughter and she's sitting in the back with the writing still on her forehead and then she gets a phone call and then uh we see it jumps over to uh carrie washington and she's driving and then it's like somebody's following her like a cop car is following her and i'm like why the cops following her and then they um they don't have like the lights on and not trying to pull her over so why is they following her so then she pulls up to, you know, her house and then gets out and then she sees, like, you know, the officer and then she sees her daughter get out there. She's like, oh, my God, what happened? And then uh, Elena, Reese or whatever, and her kids and Moody pull up and he's like, it's, it's, it's my fault. Don't be upset at Pearl and all that. She was like, what happened? And then she finds out it's like trespassing. She's like, trespassing? And then she was like, what you did? She starts going off on Pearl. And she was like, the police, like, you know, that was just stupid. And then Reese Witherspoon jumps in. She was like, wait, she's not, it's not that bad. You know, she's like, he's not even really police. He's just neighborhood watch and whatnot. And um, even Moody wanted me to come over here before to say that it's not her fault and all that. And she was just so upset because I understand, like, black mamas, I'm like, it's different. You can't just sit there and go off, run off with these little white kids and think that you going to get the same treatment because you not. Because if something really bad would have happened, who would have really got in trouble? Probably that little black girl. So, you know, even though it was just thankfully he wasn't really police and she was with um, a child of someone who was like, you know, already a big prominent person in that area or whatnot but that could have went another way and that's why i can understand why carrie washington was so upset or her character was so upset in this instant because no black parents want their kids to be coming up with the police ever i mean thankfully coming up alive and un- unharmed of course but that's just like that it's just especially around this this point you know i mean shit even if the shit happened now it's just like a heightened thing you know and it's just like it's just the way it is right now and it's sad that it's the way it is it's a sad reality but I uh, completely understand her in this moment of being scared upset and all that so she tells Pearl to get in the house and then she's just like you know thank you whatever Elena or whatever I'll see you later so from there um So from there, uh, she goes and she talks to Pearl and then she was like, mom, um, it wasn't even that, uh, big, I'm sorry, but you know, even, um, Elena wasn't even that upset. And then she was like, you think that you're going pretty much what I said, like, you think that they're going to treat you if something really happened, that they're going to treat you the same way that they treat them. That's not it. You need, you know that like it's, it's just the same like race talk that she was pretty much 
Good. Over what I just said. And then she was like, you know, um, Elena, some moms put their kids first. And um, cause, no, because she, no, the reason why she jumped off on trying to say moms put their kids first is because once Elena saw all that shit go down, she was like, oh, no, we leaving. We should just be leaving to Connecticut now. And we just going to leave from out of here. I'm like, you was not going to do that to that little girl. That is not right to do that. That's really fucked up. I know she made a mistake. She is a teenager. We They make mistakes. I made plenty. Uh, this is getting long, y'all. I'm sorry, but I just wanted... This is just my first impression of the show. So it's probably just going to be longer than it would be for the rest of the uh, season, maybe. But it's just long because I just want to get out like all these elements to the show that I'm noticing in it. And thank you if you are watching to this point. And I'm still not done. I got a little bit more. Hang in there with me. So from there, they're arguing. And then she was like, um, Mom, no, you promised that we stay here for a bit. Um, or whatnot, and then it was uh, another thing because she never even paints her full room because she never gets she got to paint it back so quickly because she never stays anywhere for more than a few months. And like she, she's like, Mom, I'm tired. Some parents put their kids first, and um, and all that, like Elena. And I know that was like kind of hurt Carrie Washington, but I'm like, Yeah, you uprooting that child every few months to take her all around the damn country so you can do these installations or art. I understand you want to do your art, but you shouldn't have had no kids if you um, wanted to just travel around the world. That girl is tired, and she's been cool. She seems like she's a nice child. And as she listened to her mom, what her mom would be telling her to do, she's just trying to have a little fun, and she finally felt like somewhere that she belongs or whatnot. Like, and that's a hard thing, especially in a whole mostly white neighborhood and stuff. And she feeling like making friends and getting along, and don't take that from that little girl, that baby. That's just not right. So, and then she was like just so upset, and then she just told her to, you know, go to your room. She's like, you want? She's like, um, she's like, I just want because she told her mom she wanted more than just one wall. She's like, you've had a hundred walls in a hundred different places. You know how many kids would love that? I'm like, but not everybody want that. A lot of kids just like stability and consistency. Don't nobody want all that. Maybe you want that, and older people might want that and go around and travel. But that don't mean that that baby want that. And then she's gonna send her to her room. But even after that, you know, she was in her room crying and then Carrie in her room crying. And then they did the little knocking of, they little Morris Code knocking of I love you. And, you know, they cool. But, you know, the girl just want to stay there and just get some roots somewhere. And you can tell that. So from there, we see uh, Pearl the next day is going to return the bike to Moody. And then his older brother there, he's like, well, yeah, you can return and put it over there. And if you want to stay, he just went to the stove. He'll be back in a minute. She's like, all right, cool. So she over there hanging out with the, you know, Reese Witherspoon kids. And Mia pulls up, Carrie Washington pulls up. And she just sees, like, the house, beautiful house. Again, like, it's like in awe. And then she walks up and she sees um, Izzy on the line. And then she's, uh, Izzy makes a thing like, and then she takes a picture of Izzy and she's like, um, what are you doing? She's like, where's, um, Pearl or whatnot. And then she's walking on the grass. She's like, oh, my mom wouldn't like you walking on the grass. And she's like, I'm sure she would. Oh, cause Izzy is sitting there spray painting and doing, um, her, uh, dress or some furniture, excuse me, black. And then she's like, and I'm sure your mom wouldn't like black spray paint. And then she told her, um, about a different spray paint that she should try that's better quality but cost less money and then she was like you know us artists have to stay together I was like oh that's cute that you know maybe she'll bond with her because that little girl needs somebody to talk to Izzy and then she goes into uh Reese Witherspoon's house she's looking around and you could just see like oh it's just money it smell like money it look like money up in there and then she walking through their study I'm like she's just be anybody walking on through the house but that's how them big houses be just walking on in honestly that's why they be getting robbed and stuff but <laughs> She walks in and you see they got like two computers. You know how badly I wanted a computer in the 90s? I didn't get a computer to dang near college <laughs> in the 2000s. So I was like, oh my goodness. Like they got two computers? Oh my goodness. <laughs> so it just, just tells you like the wealth and the money that they have. I don't know what daddy do because mama's just a journalist and... And she's not even for a big uh, newspaper. She's for a lower level newspaper. And it was even mentioned how she 
could have got a uh, position at a higher level newspaper, but she was pregnant with Izzy at the time. I was like, don't tell me that she's been resenting this little girl since she had her, because that would really suck, because I was like, that seems like a little weird tidbit to be in there. So from there, she walks in and she sees Pearl sitting there hanging out, talking, and they watching what none other than the real world. And it was awesome. That was another 90s tease, and they were talking about some how it wasn't going to be as good as the last season because of the whole thing with Pedro. And if y'all remember the 90s, I don't know who's watching this, the 90s with Pedro and the whole AIDS thing, that was a big moment in television, especially reality te television to keep that going, RIP Pedro and everything and the AIDS epidemic, it was big, y'all. And I remember that like way, way back. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanna throw that in. So from there, she sees her child so happy and then she's like, Pearl, and she say nothing else, you know that black mama look, come on girl. So they leave in and then she's like, gives her the car keys and says, go get in the car, I'm gonna go talk to Elena real quick. She's like, okay. So Elena sees Izzy up on the, um in front on the front line spray painting looking with her hair and the little ponytails looking like she just came out of any 90s movie ever um and then she's like pearl oh, you know she's like izzy or isabella or whatever what are you doing she's about, she's about to go in on her but then mia comes from behind off from so she, and into her obvious she's like oh hey um hi and then um mia's like oh hey i just want to talk to you for a minute if you have one she's like yeah sure she's like um, I wanted to take you up on that position that you graciously offered me before or whatever. So she ends up saying that she wants to take the house managing position, house manager, or, you know, clean up or whatever position. Oh, or whatnot. And then she's like, oh, okay, sure. Yeah. So that was, I was like, why do you want to work at her house? It seemed like you don't like her. I don't know. It's just so weird. It's like their relationship is so strange. I'm interested into how it's going to develop because I'm getting a lot of different vibes from it, but I'm not 100% sure. I just need to watch a little more and then I can get a better view of how they're going to go with things. But I'm a little confused. It's a little weird. So from there, but then a little other things happen at the end of the episode that made me a little weird too. Um, from there, um, she gets in a car with Pearl, and then she tells Pearl, like, yeah, we need to go to the paint store and get some more cobalt blue. And that's the paint that she used for her one wall. And then she was like, really, Mom? She's like, yeah. So she could paint her whole room because they're going to be staying in Shaker for a while. I don't know if they're going to stay for the whole school year or they're going to stay or what. And then she, and she, it seems like it because she took that job. So it seems like she's really going to try. And she's doing the right thing as a mother to be there for, you know, her daughter. Her daughter's tired and she's actually going to try, but I don't feel, I feel like that's going to really hurt Mia. But I mean, you got to put your ch children first. You chose to have that girl. So, and you've been running her ragged all around the country. Like, let her have something. So from there, uh, Elena was very happy about that. She feel like they're making like a little breakthrough as far as their um relationship so she goes and now she finally wanted to go check her reference now that this woman's going to be in your house around your children and your husband now you want to check the references so she calls whoever about checking the reference and she's like hey this is so and so so and so i just wanted to check the reference and blah 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 give me a call back whenever and whatever so and then that goes off from there and then we see um once uh, they go back in the house, uh, Pearl and Mia, she has the bike that she had been working on. She fixed it all up, and it's just so cute. It's got all, like, little writings on it and all that stuff, and it's way better than the bike that Moody gave her because it was made with love from her mama. So it's just really sweet, the gesture that she put forth for her daughter, and that was just a very nice moment. And then, what else? We see um, Reese Witherspoon um, talking, uh, and it's, it's Saturday apparently, and she it's time to get it in with her and Pacey. So they had a little love scene, and then after they do that, um, it jumps over to um, Carrie Washington, and she's this time she's having a dream, but she's laying on some other lady's lap, a black chick with some braids and stuff. She laying on her lap, and then all of a sudden she, at first I'm like, is this like a who is this woman whose lap she laying in? I'm like, I don't know Mia's sexual orientation at this point. I mean, just because she has a daughter does not mean that she is uh, 
heterosexual. Um, so she's laying on this woman's lap in her dream on the subway again, and then she's kissing her hand and all that. Then all of a sudden, it jumps, and we see Jesse Williams staring at her like a creep again. And then instead of, and then it flashes out because you know the uh, subway was flashing, and it flashes out from being Jesse Williams to being Reese Witherspoon staring at her real creep like. And I'm like, how is she replacing? Him and her and her psyche and who the hell is Jesse Williams in to her in this at all? Is that Pearl Daddy? Is that a boyfriend, a father, or some? I mean, not father, but somebody. So that was very interesting. And again, I'm sure we'll figure it out later in the season. And then from there, we see Reese with this moon um, in all her after sexness with Pacey, and her phone rings. She jumps up, answers the phone, and then she was like, "Hey, I just wanted to check." the reference of Miss Mia, whatever her last name is. And he was like, yeah, I've never rinsed it to anyone named me. And she's like, really? She had you down as a reference. He was like, I don't even know. I don't know nobody named like that. I've never have known anybody like that name like that in my life. I'm like, girl, you don't know nobody who could lie about your references for you. Like everybody got somebody can like, hey, if they call you and they ask them, they say my name, they say this, just say this. You know, you got to have some people, you know, especially if you're doing some shady stuff and you need some references. So already she's, it's like, damn, I didn't rinse it to this woman and Reese with a spoon's mind, I'm saying. But she seems like she's the kind of woman who just really doesn't want to be told that she was wrong or she made the wrong move. I don't know if she's actually going to tell anybody that Mia's references, or like tell her husband or nothing that these references don't exist. I feel like she might confront Mia about it um, later or the next time she sees her, but I don't think she's going to right away tell her husband about it. Um, and yeah, that is it, y'all. I know this was long, but this was my first impression of the show. I am very intrigued to start off with. I am going to continue watching it, and I'm going to see how many people watch this review. I know it is really long, and I hope I gave you a good, a, kept you entertained the whole time. That's the, doesn't matter if it's long, as long as it's entertaining. Um... Yeah, and it was a lot to process, y'all. And I just wanted to give y'all my whole full thought on the opening pilot episode of the show. And that was it. Um, if you guys are watching it, let me know. Um, again, uh, I'm saying this on after every video. You guys be safe out there. I know it's crazy. And I had more time on my hands to review a little bit more. And I'm running out of shows because a lot of my shows are ending. So if this happens to be a good show, and it seems like it is from the first episode, I will continue watching it. And again, depending on my feedback from you guys, um, it depends on if I'm going to continue reviewing it, if there's a conversation there to talk to. Because the other shows I was reviewing already had like a base and a fan base and all that. This is a very new show. I don't know. Maybe nobody's reviewing it. <laughs> I don't know. I didn't check. But that was my uh, two cents on this, and I'm looking forward to it. I'm going to continue watching it um, soon, um, and I will be putting out the catching up and putting out the just to catch up. I'll try to put out a video like every other day until we're caught up until the next actual episode that's supposed to be coming up. Um, I, f I didn't see what date it was, so I don't know if it aired already for the week or not or how the schedule is on Hulu, but I will be checking that. And just to get us all caught up, I'll do that. So anyway, y'all, <laughs> again, you guys, be safe. Um, I know we're, it's, the world is crazy right now, but it's nice to escape, especially to the 90s. Yay, I love the 90s, y'all. They were way better than right now. Um, but yeah, um, I will see you guys soon. Be safe. Uh, hope you're having a great day, evening, whenever you're watching this and all that. Love you, love you, love you. Peace. Bye.